All right, addicts, check this out. We have Raven X on the line. Guys, how are you doing tonight? Hey, Billy, how are you? Doing Good, great. How are you? Doing great, great. Thanks for calling in tonight. Thanks for having me. Anytime, yeah. Cool. If you want to take a second and uh, tell us who you are and what you do in the band. I'm Nixon. I do all the vocals and lyrics of Raven X. And I'm Chaos, and I do all the instruments and music and production for Raven X. Cool, very cool. So now, give us a little history about Raven X. How long have you guys been together? When did it all start? Well, we actually met each other and knew each other before the start of Raven X. And, yeah. uh, we, we were together as a couple, and I was playing in bands, and, and Nix has always been interested in vocals. And I was struggling in different bands, playing around, and it was hard to keep bands together, obviously. And, uh, you know, so we started talking about it and trying a few things out and had a drummer friend that, that we knew, so we got together with him and to see what, what Nick could do. And, you know, I was totally blown away right off the bat. So I knew right then, you know, might as well start a band <laughs> with her. And, and, you know, from there, we tried to start being a live band at first. We brought a lot of people in, tried them out for bass and drums, and nothing ever really settled in very well. Nothing really worked out. We struggled with that for a long time. Then after a long talk, we decided we're just going to sit back and do this ourselves. And uh, that's what took so long, basically, is we you know, we started from scratch, starting you know from the recording equipment and everything to do it ourselves. So, you know, it took a while, but it was worth the wait, I think. Definitely. So now, how'd you guys decide on the name Raven X for the band? Tell us about the songwriting. Uh, how do you guys go about it? Well, basically, I start everything musically. Usually, um, occasionally, Nix will have a you know a little idea for some lyrics, but usually I demo most of the music, and then uh, and then I hand it to her, and, and I give it to her, and she listens to it, and, and goes from there and writes the vocals, and you know it's, it's kind of nice to pass it off and let her do her thing. So generally, I, I start everything off musically, and then. to it that I just try to just sit there and just let it, you know, just keep constantly, like, listen to it and think about what I'm feeling, and that's how I come up with the concept of, you know, the, the theme of the song, and then the lyrics come, and then, yeah, definitely, because the music is so melodic, it's so, just the touches on so many different levels, instead of just the constant, you know, death metal, it's just, I love it, just everything on it, just like, there's so many layers to it, and so many different emotions that you go through in one song, and that's just, that's makes it easy for me to figure out like a theme or where to go and, and how to take it you know and have people feel what, what what I feel so cool cool so now how would you describe your music to people hmm. Hmm. well we've been calling it gothic <laughs> death metal so I guess that would be the best way to describe it um you know we've actually wondered that too you know what would you describe it as I, yeah I, I'd say that's probably the best description gothic death metal all right definitely yeah yeah and you know and I think that's um what what caught my ear man because I, I I love that whole gothic um Victorian you know 
type thing, and then with the, the twist of death metal in there, and then a female growler. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> say you evolved musically since back in the day? song you guys can remember learning? For me it was uh, Arch Enemy, uh, We Will Rise, definitely in that genre. That was, that was my very first, you know, time getting, doing the growls and seeing if I could hit it because I love Angela Doss. I always just was like, oh, I'm going to try and do that, you know, as good as she does. So that was my first song. Great song. Love it. Absolutely. Big Randy Rhodes fan. Big, big J.D. Lee fan. You know, love them all. So. Oh, hell yeah. So now, how about the strangest thing you guys ever seen at a show?
seen was Marilyn Manson for the first time. Oh, my God. You know, just seeing that person come out. I mean, he was, like, not even known. And I was like, wow, what is that? That was pretty cool, though, <laughs> to see him. He was wild. <laughs> I was like, wow, what's that? And the following, too, like, the people. It was really cool. So that was probably about the weirdest thing I've seen at the show, I would say. Back then. <laughs> I know one thing in the show that caught me kind of as a surprise is um, I had a friend invite me to see Tom Petty one time. So, you know, I went out, and, and at the time I wasn't a big Tom Petty fan, you know, I appreciate his music more now, but when I got there, you know, I was looking around, and there's these big biker guys and, you know, these big tough-looking guys, and they, they got tattoos of I Love Tom Petty on their arm, and I, I don't know, it caught me by surprise. You know, I didn't realize how much of a following he had and how, how loyal his fans were. So... I don't know if it was strange, but it was it was surprising, I guess, to see you know, to see that. Cool, cool. Well, the first song I want to play tonight is uh, your first single from the CD, "Angel of the Night." What can you tell us about that tune? Check this out. The first single from their new CD, Essence Without Light. This is Angel of the Night. We'll be right back with Raven X.
All right, addicts, welcome back. We are back here with Raven X. Guys, how you doing? Good, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Uh, the chat room's loving the song. Angel cool. of the Night. Very cool. I'm glad they like it. Yeah, me too. So now, who would you say your musical influences are? Um, at the present time, I'd say my, my biggest musical influences are probably... Ishan, uh, who's in lead singer for Emperor at one time. His new music, incredible. Love the progressiveness, you know, progressive angle he's taken on the stuff. Still keeping to that black metal feel, but, you know, going on with a more progressive feel. Um, actually, his wife and Star of Ash, which probably a lot of people have never heard of. I'm a big fan of that, too. It's a lot more, you know, it's a lot mellower, but, but still something I really like. Um, and then I'm also really influenced by uh, Stephen Wilson, in his various projects, Porcupine Tree, and things such as that, um, his production is incredible. And, and you know, when I was working on mixing the album and things like that, you know, I, I was influenced by his ability to keep things really clean and, and you know stuff like that. So, say right now, those are probably my my biggest influences. Mine are very similar. Also, like I said, Angela Goss was awesome, and I love Bjork. She's like. I uh, always loved Bjork, so I know it's kind of a different twist on it, but she just, she just, her voice is amazing, so I, I love her. I also really like um, Jared Leto, 30 Seconds to Mars, I know a lot of people are probably like, that's kind of wimpy, but I really, really like his voice, I think he's awesome at what he does, but Ishan for sure for me too, Gojira, listen to so many, Dimu, you know, I love them all really, so. Devin Townsend. Devin Townsend. Devin, he's yeah, he's great. Small, incredible, but really into his new, new stuff a lot. Yeah, he's amazing. 
very, very amazing. Cool. Absolutely. So is this, this the type of music you guys uh, listen to? Um, yeah, it kind of, I mean, I definitely love, you know, a lot of metal. Uh, I will admit, though, I, I listen to a lot of different stuff. Uh, you know, today when I was kicking around the house before the interview, I was listening to some, some funk, you know, <laughs> uh, stuff like that, which I mentioned before. I, I listen to Mozart, you know, and different classical things like that a lot. I love Mozart. I listen to Mozart as much as I listen to anything, actually. Um, I listen to things like Bjork, like, like Nick said, uh, Shot A, Fiona Apple, stuff like that. Um, pretty much everything, yeah, really. Yeah, 80s style, oh, music, like 80s, new age yeah. 80s, the cure yeah. and stuff like that, get into a lot. Um, always been a big Pink Floyd fan, Zeppelin, you know, Sabbath for sure. Sabbath's always been a big influence on, on you know, the way I think metal should be played, I guess. <laughs> right, right. Riff oriented stuff. So, yeah, of course, Sabbath for sure. But yeah, I'd say a pretty pretty wide range of, of things we listen to for sure. Cool, cool. Can't get into country. <laughs> can't get into country. <laughs> we just can't do it. I try, it doesn't work. No. I try cash, that's about it. <laughs> I, I I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> well, country and, and rap. I I can't do yeah. the rap either. But <laughs> yeah. Johnny Cash is in country. He's, he's a rock and roll. He's heavy metal. That's right. He's <laughs> at a whole different level. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely, uh, I have to I agree with you guys about Bjork there. She's an uh, incredible voice. Yeah. Oh, amazing. She's, she's amazing. Instantly recognizable. You know it's her, like as soon as she yeah. opens her mouth. Oh, yeah. She's, she's when Nick, amazing. When Nick's first would play her, play Bjork for me. <laughs> I would actually, you know, kind of maybe being closed-minded or something, I, you know, oh, I don't want to hear this, turn that shit off, you know, that's what I felt like. <laughs> and then uh, she bought, you know, the DVD of the of the acoustic unplugged type thing. You know, and I yeah. really sat and watched her, and I was like, she's incredible, I, you know, I can't believe this. <laughs> and then I got in one of those kicks where, you know, for three straight months, that's all I played was Bjork, so, you know, I think I was getting <laughs> mixed to be like, hey, turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> He was worried to think for me, and that was crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. So now, what do you guys enjoy doing when you're not working on Raven X? What, what do you guys like to do? I watch um, hockey. I'm a huge hockey fan. I love the yeah, Penguins. That's yeah, my favorite Penguins. team. Yeah, hell yeah. Billy's there by, uh, by Philadelphia, so he's probably a flyer. Oh, so. no. Are you a Flyers fan? No, really? no. We we got the baby pens up here, so. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. And then Plus, we do a kick. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we've been working on the acoustic, like, little duo thing that we do, so that's something we, you know, we do for fun, and maybe in the future we'll, you know, we'll be playing it out live, too. Um, mm -hmm. That probably won't be something that's, that most people would get to see. Probably be something more kept locally but but you know it's, it's a lot of fun just to sit back and strip everything down and you know right. it's real good for you you know to practice that way too because you know when you have one guitar and one vocal every little air sticks out you know so right. it, it works we work on an accuracy that way and everything and you know, that was why we first intended on doing it but you know we, we really have a lot of fun doing it so something yeah. you know we, we may expand on in the future cool, cool. Right. very cool so now you know, you, you guys stated that you're just a, a two piece now, but are you are you looking for a complete band? That would be a dream. That would be awesome to find people to fill and all that. But man, it's been very hard to find anyone to do, that wants to do it, you know, so seriously. I don't know. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping in the future someone will come up to us and say something like that, like, Hey, maybe we can do this. That would be that would be a dream come true for sure. To play live someday. That would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, there would be a need for it, too. You know, I'm hoping that there'd be enough people out there that want to see Raven X live. And, yeah. that, you know, they kind of force us into making sure that happens. You know, <laughs> as of right now, I, you know, I think we're probably going to turn towards focusing towards writing the next album and, and, you know, moving forward and hopefully not taking as long to release it as we did the, the debut <laughs> album. Right. <laughs> Well, the next song I want to play 
is uh, a demo you guys had released for a while, but it, you uh, revamped it, Take the Pain. What can you tell us about that tune? Um, Take the Pain was actually initially written with a little bit simpler arrangement than I had for most of the other songs. Um, okay. Two people I played with in the past have said that, especially vocalists, have said that you know I don't leave much room for vocals. I, I think Nick's actually showed that you know in the songs that that's not true. But it was kind of my response to the fact that you know I wanted to give the vocals a little bit more you know room to sing and, and do what they they could do best. So it's a little bit more of a classic style. And then you know obviously Nick took it to where it is from there vocally. Um, and then re-recording it, you know, we definitely wanted to re-record it for the album. The demo was great, you know, it was, it was, it was great to have it online, and, you know, I think a lot of people noticed Raven X with the demos online, but, it, you know, for the album, it obviously needed to be upgraded, better sound, and, uh, you know, after a couple of years having Take the Pain online as a demo, um, you know, I started hearing the song a little differently, and, and you know, some new things came to mind that I, that I added in musically. And, uh, you know, and that's where it ended up. Cool. Yep. All right, addicts, check this out. This is Take the Pain from Raven X, and we'll be right back. Yeah. 
All right, addicts, we're back with Raven X. Guys, how you doing? Good, Raven. Cool, cool. Now we got a chat room question here for you. Is they want to know uh, who played bass on the CD? That'd be chaos. Yeah, I played. Uh, I played all the music on the, the CD. Every instrument. Um, you know, the struggle at times because I'm, I'm a guitar player first. But you know, I guess uh, I had a vision for the way I wanted the songs to sound, and I guess I was the only one that could really make that. You know, to play what was in my head. So. I decided at one point to, to do everything, and uh, I don't know if I knew what I was getting myself into at the time, but, <laughs> but you know, in the long run, it was worth it, and, and I'm happy the way it turned out. Cool, cool, cool. So now, what advice would you guys have for bands just starting out? Hmm. I would say that if you're just starting out, I would either go 100% into it or not at all, because there's no yeah, room no. for... No room for half-assed in, in, in music. Not nowadays. Sure. That's right. Shouldn't be you like know. that. That's right. I if agree. anything, you'll just piss off your other band members if you're half-assed about it. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, would, I would say, yeah, you know, you want to give it your, your everything you got because if you don't, you know, these days you can give it everything you got and you can still not get anywhere. So if you're not giving right. it all ten percent as they say, then you're probably... Don't bother. Yeah, then don't bother. Don't you know, bother. It's likely not going to work out for you. Right. Cool, cool. So now, are you guys on a label now? Or are you looking for one? Um, we actually created as the records um, when we to release the album when we created it ourselves. Uh, as far as looking for to move to a, a more of a major label, I would definitely be interested in that. But it would definitely depend on what was coming with it, I suppose. Um, right. Something I guess we would cross that bridge if, if it came to it. Uh, at the time, you know, we created our label to, re to release our CD and, and anything future that we release. And uh, we've had actually a little bit of response to, to the label. A couple bands have gotten in, t in touch with us and, you know, have expressed interest in being on the label. So that might be something to, that we look into a little bit more in the future, helping bands similar to us that maybe don't play live or maybe are just kind of getting started, getting their music out there and, you know, helping them get it out and get it released to the public and uh, maybe, you know, save them a little bit of the work that, that we had, the learning curve that we had to, to make sure that the, that the album could be put out at least right. So, you know, in the future, we, we may actually try to develop our label as an independent label, you know, to, to help bands start off. Cool, cool. So now, you know, that's uh, one thing I usually talk about with the bands, like, in uh, this day and age, with so much uh, social media, you almost don't need that major label deal. Not that a band wouldn't want it, but you almost don't need it. Right. Yeah, I, w I would agree with that for sure. You know, if you need expenses paid, I suppose, for touring or something like that, where you, or you need upfront money, I suppose that would come into play. Um, maybe that's the good thing about live. You know, right? Raven X not being a live band right now is we don't need those. You know, those expenses paid or upfronted any of that. So, so um, yeah, I would say with social media, like you said, you know, it's, it's helped us get out there. When we first put our demos out there, actually, uh, um, of Take the Pain and Immortal Beloved, we actually intended them just to help us find members. We recorded the demos to help us find other members to come in and join Raven X so that we could move forward and write with them and play live with them. And, uh, you know, it kind of picked up momentum on its own. We didn't really expect that. We, you know, so, right. you know, it was kind of a, a little blessing in disguise putting them on there. It started, started getting the following. You know, people started liking our page on, on, on MySpace at first and then, you know, on Facebook. And, uh, you know, we got great people like Billy from Keep It Metal that, you know, they got behind us and helped push us. And, yeah. you know, and it worked out great. So, you know, it was nice to, to have those things on there. And start we getting a fan base. Oh, yeah, definitely. Doing that for us, definitely. We, you know, one of our biggest uh, supporters is you, for sure. That's awesome. Oh, definitely. We were getting it Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it, you know, you, you guys are great. I, I always loved your music, and uh, this new CD blew me away, definitely. So I'm going to push you even harder. Very <laughs> <Pretty> good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So now, what would you say is the ultimate goal for Raven X? Hmm. Hmm. That's probably a different question, a difficult question to answer. Um, I'm ultimately, like we talked about, we would like to play live and, yeah, and that'd be you know, do some kind of touring or at least, you know, maybe, uh, you know, just events, you know, certain shows. Um, we have had some offers along the way that we've had to turn down, you know, due to the fact that we didn't have a band. But, at, you know, up until the CD was released, we 
we really haven't had enough to demand it at the time, you know. So we would like that for sure, but I suppose that, you know, the biggest goal is just to keep the RD together as many people as we can, and hopefully the people that listen to it enjoy it. And that's, you know, all the bigger thing we want. It's evolving constantly, you know, just pushing the limits of things too, and just we can all work together too, so, for sure. Absolutely. Cool, cool. So what would your dream show be? I mean, where would it be? Who would you guys be uh, touring with? Mm, Lojira. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Lojira. Um, I don't know. Thank you. What do you think? Yeah, that's, that's a tough question. Uh, I'd probably love to play with, with Ishan. You know, like I said, yeah. I'm a huge fan of that. Gojira too. Incredible. Uh, always been a big, big Meshuggah fan. Love them live. You know, they're incredible musicians. Um, so, yeah, yeah, a tour with those three bands and us would be, would be pretty cool. <laughs> cool. So now here's another a curveball question I got to throw at is, uh, Renee always asks this question, um, who spends the most time in front of the mirror? Hmm, <laughs> 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 maybe equal. No, I'm kidding. Uh... <laughs> 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 I don't know. Well, you, you know, I, I got a head full of hair too, so I, I spend a lot of time in front of the mirror. You know. That's right. <laughs> So now, where can the listeners find Raven X? Um, all over the internet, really. It's Facebook, you know, MySpace is still, if people are still there, I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Fever Nation. Uh, you can find us in iTunes, you know, to, to download our CD. You can download it at Amazon, Rhapsody, uh, all those places like that. Um, the physical CD can actually buy it at www.batsugrecords.com backslash store. Um, you know, and, and you can buy the CD directly from us there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much everywhere on the Internet. You can find us on, on, on the Keep It Metal pages, too. Definitely. Cool. So now the last song I want to play tonight uh, absolutely blew me away when I heard it, Sleepless Nights. Sweet. Uh, what can you tell us about that tune? Why did you choose this song? Well, definitely it was challenging vocally, for sure, and it was something that I always went straight for. If I was going to try something, I wanted to try the hardest, the, you know, something that I thought that maybe I couldn't do. And I was like, I want to try this, and Chaos was like, that would be badass if you could do King Diamond. I was like, oh, my God, wouldn't it? So we tried it, and I was like, hey, I want to go for it. Let's do this, you know, after I tried it a couple times. So it means a lot to hear that you really liked it because that was one of my most, I was so afraid what people would think because people do know who King Diamond is and I definitely want, did not want to bastardize the song vocally so I wanted to make sure that I just, you know, I just gave it my all, I tried to feel everything that he felt and just go for it, so thanks again for the compliment on that for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree that, I, I didn't mention King Diamond as an influence, but King Diamond's band, you know, has always been an, an influence on on me as far as musical. I love the way King Diamond's music takes you through different moods, you know, different atmospheres. I think that a lot of, you know, metal bands maybe miss out on. It doesn't sound the same, although people probably argue that, you know, the vocals maybe sound similar. I, you know, I know people are hit or miss on King Diamond sometimes, but I mean, I absolutely love it. You know, Mickey D is probably my all-time favorite drummer, you know, as far as, as metal, metal drummers go. And, uh, yeah, you know, I figured if we could do that song, you know, it would probably fit along the album, you know, with the rest of the songs on the album kind of fit in and not, not stand out as a, as a song that you're kind of wondering where that came from. So, yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. We got one more chat room question. I believe it's uh, your cousin here, BB2. They want to know when you're moving to Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've actually thought about that. We did, times. right? <laughs> Well, you know, there's some there's some a bass player and drummer out there listening in Pittsburgh that want to be part of Raven X. Something good, all of us. Maybe we'll move out that oh, yeah. way. There you go. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Well, Nick's chaos. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. It's been an honor, a pleasure. It's been an honor to be here. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, 
that. Thank you so much, Billy. If you guys want to hang on just for one second, check this out, sure. Addicts. This is Sleepless Nights from Raven X. We'll be right back. Give us our house back and keep it locked. 